pleasure, I should say, for me to, uh, to welcome you to the Teaching and Learning Conference. So every year, Chad, the Center for Higher Education Development organizes and hosts uh, this conference um, on, a, on really a, a key aspect or component of what we are all about at the university. Uh, the themes vary from year to year, and it uh, is interesting, in fact, uh, if one goes back and considers the themes that, um, that have, in a sense, shaped the conferences over the years. And, of course, this year the theme uh, is very much around assessment, artificial intelligence, and, and the like. So it gives us an opportunity, really, to, to get to grips in a pretty focused way over the next uh, two days on, uh, or rather with a number of issues that uh, we, we really have to grapple with right now. Um, and I say that particularly um, with the, shall we say, the, the, the rapid development, the pervasive nature of artificial intelligence. What does that mean for teaching and learning and, of course, for assessment in particular? Um, I'd just like to say a bit about um, the, um, uh, the assessment policy, UCT assessment policy, which was drafted by the UCT uh, assessment project team, and that was led by um, Sakeno Walji from CHED, uh, from SILT in CHED, I should say. So the, uh, the policy is in line very much with the uh, curriculum change framework, which had been developed and adopted some five years ago, uh, and which highlights the need to understand student success in a, in a more comprehensive way than, um, than you know, we have been accustomed to doing traditionally. Uh, encourage, promoting, uh, encourage practices that really promote assessment for learning and as a social practice, so assessment going beyond uh, you know, making an assessment of whether the student has, has understood, has done enough, uh, you know, whether the student is able to pass, that sort of thing, going much beyond that. So the new assessment policy has been developed in, in consultation with many staff members and students uh, across the faculty, so around the university, for improving assessment in ways that are appropriate to each discipline and, of course, assessment modes like teaching modes uh, vary considerably or differ considerably from one discipline to the next. And um, in this way, we also are able to prepare students for uncertain futures where, you know, people say the only, the only constant is change, in fact. Um, the assessment policy has been developed also very much with UCT's Vision 2030 in mind, and in particular, the, uh, the three pillars that, uh, that drive the vision, namely excellence, sustainability, and uh, transformation. Um, the policy has been, it's come to the senior executive, it's been approved at the senior executive level, and we are hoping that uh, we'll be able to implement it in 2024 uh, with support from a good practices assessment guide. That'll be really valuable. Um, good practice assessment guide and relevant support for, uh, for staff members. So I'd just like to mention um, a little more about, about the policy. In fact, the, uh, the three points of departure from the, from the previous policy. Um, in the first place, it discusses assessment as an educational practice, as I indicated earlier, and assessment also as a, as a social practice, uh, with the, really with, with the idea, the imperative, if you like, uh, to be Sense aware of, sensitive to, social, cultural, economic, and political contexts in which um, we, you know, we we live as staff members, as students, and in which assessment is uh, is in fact used. Then there's also the need for assessment design, which will, which is intended anyway to transcend individual assessment events, looking beyond the individual event, uh, this particular course in this department, um, the need for systems of assessment to reflect the, really the interconnectedness of, um, of learning outcomes and 
have those have some sort of a bearing on the on the assessment um, process itself. So um, certainly, you know what we've seen um, over the years, and certainly in the very recent past, is that the the changes in approaches to teaching and learning have been, to a very great extent, uh, been influenced by technological and other developments, and likewise um, uh, with, the, with assessment. And um, in fact, this brings me to the whole matter of artificial intelligence, which, as you will have seen, features very strongly in, um, in this conference, uh, you know, as uh, as, as you make your way through the, the discussions, the keynotes, the, um, the parallel sessions as well. Well, this is, this is the reality. Um, you know, artificial intelligence, so my definition of it is um, it's computer science and robust data sets and statistics uh, to solve various problems. All right, that's perhaps a, a rather crude definition, and you, you might be more familiar with particular aspects of artificial intelligence, um, such as large language models or machine learning or deep learning and, and the like. But nevertheless, it is um, developing extremely rapidly. It is pervasive. And it, it, you know, in a sense, uh, we, we struggle perhaps to, to catch up with what the developments are all about, what the impact is on, in our case, teaching and learning, and how should we be using it? Uh, what, are the, what are the ethical uh, implications as well? A, a host of questions that would, um, that would accompany any examination, excuse me, of the role of, um, of AI in teaching and also in assessment, of course. Um, it's certainly, I think, you know, well, I have, and I'm sure most of us have gotten to the point where we recognize that, uh, you know, far from making any attempt to, to wish it away, which would be futile anyway, I think there is a recognition uh, that um, AI can certainly enhance our experience, can be, can be used, can be deployed in ways that will certainly um, quite significantly, I would say, um, improve our approaches to teaching and learning and also to assessment. And then the challenge is, well, uh, if that is so, how does one do this? How does one um, embrace it, as it were, and, um, and deploy it in ways that, that really uh, would, would allow us to meet those sorts of goals? <clears throat> um, so. Earlier, a couple of months ago, SILT uh, released guides for UCT staff and students to help us understand the potential positive and negative impacts of generative AI technologies, you know, like ChatGPT and others, and um, their impact on and, and repercussions for, for higher education. I should just mention briefly that um, uh, also very recently I've convened um, groups of colleagues from around the university to uh, for us to work together on the development of an of an institutional strategy for artificial intelligence, um, one that uh, that would encompass certainly teaching and learning, our research activities of which there's a lot going on, uh, but also our systems and processes. You know how we our operations, how we how we run the university, and uh, SILT is a key member of this, uh, of this working group, and we'll see where all of that goes. <clears throat> and um, I should, you know, just going back to the, uh, the guides that, uh, the guide that SILT um, developed, uh, the Deputy Director of SILT, uh, Dr. Tabisa Maisela, uh, indicated that we, you know, currently don't have any tool that can definitively detect the use of generative AI in student assignments. So, you know, there is, there is one particular challenge. Uh, as a result, SILT and CHED are um, encouraging UCT uh, our faculties, our departments as well, really to, to reconsider, to, to take a fresh look, a deeper look uh, to review our modes of assessment. 
Um, so, you know, one higher education analyst, for example, um, recommends that educators move away from testing for accrued knowledge and instead assess based on practical applications of knowledge. Now, now that's not really to do with AI. I mean, I think that is a, it's a proposal, it's an idea uh, which surely has been knocking around for some time. You know, um, how, how exactly, uh, what exactly are you assessing for? Uh, I think it's a good question anyway, uh, you know. Uh, but in this particular case, it means creating assessments that focus on complex tasks that require the student to think critically and creatively. Uh, solving problems, applying their own perspectives on the accrued knowledge. And then the question is, um, to, to what extent and, and how can artificial intelligence be used in order to, shall we say, optimize this particular way of approaching assessment, which I think uh, is, is a question very, very well worth considering, given the way it, it shapes the, the question as to, as to the purpose, if you like, of, of assessment. So in particular, we must create platforms for teachers and students together then to seek out, shall we say, relevant, locally relevant, uh, culturally responsive ways to apply what they are learning in the world, um, the world you know, beyond their student days, where they will live and work, and, um, and really to... Um, to think about exercising leadership um, in this particular in this particular domain, because that's the other thing about it. Um, it is all so new, so rapidly developed, and we we're running with it now, um, catching up, but also using, exploiting, deploying. And I think um, in this way, we we have we our students as well uh, are in a position. To, to share what we, what we know, what we've developed with uh, you know, individuals, with groups, uh, with sectors outside of UCT and outside of, of the university um, environment as well, where they too are grappling with these sorts of questions. So, um, you know, as we, go, as we go along the way, uh, of course there are, there are various... Um, aspects of AI that, that we have to be aware of and also uh, be careful or, or take care in, in, in how, we, how we approach our particular uses and, and problems and so on. Uh, one of these is, is bias because remember um, that artificial, artificial intelligence, whichever particular form um, of it um, we, we are using, uh, depends on, on data huge, huge data sets, training those data sets and the like. And there may well be inherent biases in, in, in the data, in the content of it, and we need to be aware of that and consider how we might, uh, how we might address those particular, you know, what might be problems um, so that the, the use of the data or the data itself and the use of it is such that um, it um, reflects where we are, who we are, uh, what our particular objectives are as well. So it's not simply a case of you've got all this data and it's wonderful and go ahead with it. We have to think through these particular um, aspects as well. So um, a couple of months ago, um, we participated in a student-led discussion uh, it was a discussion, uh, a workshop really, that was uh, organized and hosted by the African Re Research Society. So the African Research Society is a, it's a, is a student society. And they've, um, they've organized some, some wonderful workshops and events um, since they were established. They've, you know, they've had uh, Nobel laureates come out and speak and, um, and have, have um, given very careful thought to particular themes that are appropriate, that, that we need to be grappling with in the domain of research, broadly speaking. And um, so uh, this year, um, a couple of months ago, together with our University of the Future project, they organized a, um, a program on embracing artificial intelligence in academia, um, 
and of course there were some really good talks and some really good discussion as well. And um, a number of questions that, that emerged from, excuse me, from, from the workshop, uh, such as how, how can we use AI to develop and build on the unique outlook and relationship that each human being brings to the learning and investigation process. So that um, relationship, if you like, between the individual and this uh, data set, if you like. Um, how, do we achieve, how do we achieve a healthy balance or synergy between AI approaches and traditional approaches to systems and processes within UCT? Um, of course, not just in teaching and learning, but um, in our operations and in our research, as I indicated earlier, this is something that, that we are um, dealing with at, at the moment. And um, I think you know, part, of the quest, part of the answer to that question uh, would be that we, uh, we should be cautious um, not to throw the baby out of the bathwater, not, not to abandon our traditional approaches, but really to consider um, innovations such as AI and their impact on assessment in light of our uh, abundant experience um, in the use of, of traditional assessment methods. Um, and then uh, a further comment or question that arose from that workshop pertains to um, governance, governance processes, so that we um, ensure that our, our teaching and learning, actually all of our activities, our research as well, these are all, these all meet ethical standards, um, they are ethically sound in the context of, um, of the use of, of AI. Um, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, ethical considerations really are quite complex, quite difficult to get to grips with, but again, we, we can't delay. It's something that we, we have to deal with right now because everything is moving so very fast. Um, <clears throat> So over the next two days, just coming to, uh, to our conference here, um, you'll be immersed in discussions that touch on these, but also other questions um, around assessment um, and the digital revolution, of course, assessment in the higher education context. Um, I think it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity that we have here, and I've, I've taken note of the of the keynotes, um, and we'll have a panel discussion right now where we will start getting to grips with some of this. So I think really it's, it's a wonderful opportunity for all of us to, um, well, to listen uh, and to contribute as well and to engage. And I'm, I'm encouraged also to see that uh, there are four parallel sessions. So th this is quite a big conference, and, uh, and the program reflects the, the degree of, uh, shall we say, interest um, and uh, activity and, and commitment, really, to, to teaching and learning. So I think I will stop there. I'm going to stay on for a bit. I, I do want to hear what the panel has got to say. Um, but I, I wish you all very well. Thank you very much. Thank you.